Hey guys, it's Chris and I'm back with another Mandalorian video and I'm telling you right now, this is the best Star Wars property. Another name drop at the end of this episode, so they got a lot going on and we learned Baby Yoda's real name. So let's jump into it, The Mandalorian Chapter 13, The Jedi. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into The Mandalorian, Chapter 13. Really, really great episode overall. Loved it. One of my favorite all-time characters is back, Ahsoka Tano. Uh, first, let me thank my newest Patreon. Thank you to Joshua. Thank you so much, Joshua. I really appreciate the support. And to all you guys on Patreon, you guys keep this channel going. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Chris, and I'm also working on my first fantasy debut novel called The Crimson Gods. If you would like to support this project and possibly become a beta reader as well, please consider joining our Patreon community where you'll get Discord access and all that as well. And I would really appreciate the support as we try to figure out this new YouTube algorithm. All right, so let's jump right into it. Dave Filoni directed this episode, so we all thought Ahsoka might show up. One of the all-time fan favorite Star Wars characters. You guys saw what happened. I'll talk about that just a little bit, obviously, but we want to explain Ahsoka and the big name drop at the end as well. So we go to Corvus where he was told last episode by Bo-Katan to go find this Jedi that he is you know, trying to figure out what the hell these things are, what are these magic sorcerer people. And he goes and finds Ahsoka, and Dave Filoni jumps right into it before he even gets there and shows her going against uh, this town, this township, and we're not quite sure who this is, but she wipes out all these guards. She's doing it ninja style. I mean, she's sneaking around. You see these two silver blades come up. She attacks somebody and then kind of disappears into the fog again. Really, really cool cinematography there. We see that this mysterious woman has a hostage, so we know that there's some situation going on here, but we're not really sure what's going on yet. So that builds the intensity, that builds the intrigue, that builds the tension, like, okay, who is this? So really good writing this episode as well. And then, of course, Mando shows up, and he's out here looking, and he gets attacked by Ahsoka, and it was an outstanding little battle. I thought they might have a little bit of a skirmish there, kind of the show the classic Mandalorian versus Jedi type of stuff, and it was really, really good. You saw that best car steel come into play as well. It is lightsaber resistant, one of the reasons it's so valuable in the Star Wars universe. So I'll get more to Ahsoka in just a minute, a little bit of backstory on her for those of you who may not be familiar with her and why everybody's so excited about, why it's trending on Twitter and all this stuff as well. And then another name drop at the end of the episode, Grand Admiral Throne. So they have a lot going on here, but we found out what Baby Yoda's name is, and I couldn't believe it. Little shout out to Spaceballs. His name is Yogurt. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. His name is Grogu. Grogu is his name. Grogu, that's so, it's kind of cute, you know, it's kind of cute, but it's weird at the same time because we're so used to calling him Baby Yoda, and I don't think, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, it's not a, it's not an accident that he was at the Jedi Temple back when there were only two other of his species there, one named Master Yoda and the other Yaddle, one male, one female, about 50 years ago or so, just saying. So we do find out a lot more about little baby Yoda. I'm sorry, Grogu. That's going to take some getting used to. So anyway, apparently he was actually trained for some time at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant uh, before the Clone Wars. It's said by different masters, and somebody knew to hide him before the Empire took over and Anakin went and destroyed the Jedi Temple. Ahsoka gave Yoda a shout-out directly by saying, I've only seen one other like his kind. And of course, she didn't mention Yaddle, but, you know, maybe she didn't see Yaddle. But a direct shout out to Yoda there, Master Yoda. So I thought that was really, really cool. Maybe a little maybe a little hint at his parent is too, just saying. The time is right. We also got a little Obi-Wan uh, homage as well uh, with Ahsoka. Ahsoka's kind of filling in Mando and all this Jedi stuff because he just knows them as space wizards. He don't really know what the Force is. She explains it to him just like Obi-Wan explained it to Luke Skywalker. So she was kind of in Obi-Wan's role here for just a moment. So I thought that was really, really good callback as well. And speaking of the shout outs and all that as well, I thought that, you know, Corvus had a Dagobah feel at times. Obviously, when he first landed, it looked like a, you know, kind of a dry, dead tree where it used to be a lush forest type of planet or whatever. But then there were some scenes when they were kind of off at night by themselves talking that it did have that Dagobah feel, especially when she was doing the testing on him, trying to see if Baby Yoda, damn it, Grogu, still had a connection to the Force. But what I thought was really cool is, you know, um, she basically told him, you know, look, he's built up this connection to you. You know, Din is like a father to him. And he used a little ball that goes on the end of his joystick from the ship, and that's what he got to, you know, pull towards himself uh, with the Force to prove to Ahsoka that he is, in fact, still has his powers, has his connection to the Force. But then she says, I cannot train him because she senses fear in him. And where do we hear this before? 
Yoda to Anakin, Mace Windu to Anakin. It was all about Anakin here. Shout out to Anakin. She said directly, I've seen what these types of feelings can do to a full-grown Jedi Master, one of the best of us. So that was a direct shout out to her former master, Anakin Skywalker, who of course became Darth Vader. I love that Mando referenced the lightsabers as laser swords. So that was really cool. Kind of shout out to the old days of laser swords. Ended up being that the kind of big bad in this episode was Morgan, a lady named Morgan, and apparently she was a Terracasi master. For those that may not be familiar, Terracasi is a martial art of the Star Wars universe, and if you remember the old Star Wars Galaxy's MMO game, which by the way, I wish they would remake that with new and updated graphics, it was one of the best MMOs of all time. You could become a Terracasi master as one of your professions, and as a matter of fact, if you were a bounty hunter, you damn near had to be to hunt Jedi. But anyway, she offers him, you know, a Beskar spear to kill the Jedi. Jedi, and of course, he had no real plans to do that. He was going to fulfill his mission. That's how he met Ahsoka in the first place. So it was a really good team-up episode. This one, this time, didn't feel so much like a side mission that we get so much of in this show, which I completely get. I mean, he is a Mandalorian. He's got to do stuff to survive. He's got to do stuff to make money and all that. But this felt like it moved the plot along really, really well. But then as Ahsoka and Mando go in and take care of the village, you know, we had an old-fashioned Western showdown with Mandalorian and the other gunslinger guy. And then we had the showdown with Morgan and Ahsoka at the same time. I thought that was really cool, kind of a dual fight there going on. But then they were fighting, you know, two lightsabers versus the best car spear. So the only reason she could even stand close to Ahsoka and still be alive after, you know, 20 or 30 seconds was because she had to be a Terracasi master. Well, it turns out that she is working for Grand Admiral Throne. Now, they got a lot going on in Mandalorian right now. You have some big names in the background. You have... You know, the references to Snoke last episode. Obviously, you already have Moff Gideon, who has Dark Saber. That's a big threat as well. And now she drops Grand Admiral Throne. So we'll get into that in just a second as well. But then we have a big shout out at the end. They're really digging into some old school legends here, pulling it out back as canon. So Ahsoka still at the end refuses to train Baby Yoda, but says there still may be a way. Go to the planet Tython. Now, I won't get into Tython here. I have two long videos, History of the Jedi Part 1 and 2, that I go into the complete Jedi history all the way back from the very beginning and Tython in depth. A word of warning, these are older videos. Some of the first I did on the channel probably five years ago, so the audio is not that great, but I think it's pretty thorough, so I'll leave those links in the description below. There's also a History of the Sith video, too, that spins off from that one because it all starts at the same source, and that was Tython. This was the very first planet where Force Sensitives were all kind of gathered at, where they formed this Jedi Order, so to speak, before it became later the Jedi Order, two different spellings there. And the planet itself was Force Sensitive, and it had two moons, one called Ashla, on the light side of the planet and one called Bogan on the dark side of the planet. And those are the actual names for the light side and dark side of the force, Ashla and Bogan. And speaking of Ashla, Ahsoka had to go under that name for a while. I thought that was really interesting too. And we found that out during the Clone Wars episodes. So just for a second, let me give a little bit of background on Ahsoka and Grand Admiral Throne. So as I said, Ahsoka Tana, one of the all-time fan favorites if you watch the Clone Wars she was actually played by Roxanne Dawson this episode. She did an outstanding job. I wanted her to get on the ship with him at the end of the episode and just go ahead and make the full show about them two being a team. I thought it was that fucking good. Anyway, Ahsoka Tano Jedi is one of the Togruta species, and it just so happens that Corvus, the planet she's on, where is where a lot of her species migrated to, so maybe that's why she's there trying to take care of these people on this planet, although I didn't see any more of her species in the city itself. Anyway, Ahsoka was actually the Padawan of Anakin Sky Skywalker during the Clone Wars, which takes place between episodes two and three of the prequels. So her and Anakin were very close. They went on a lot of, you know, missions together and all that good stuff as well. He was known for his kind of, you know, daring tenacity and she was more reserved, but she learned a lot from Anakin, obviously. But Ahsoka actually left the Jedi Order because there was a bombing of the Jedi Temple and she got blamed for it. What actually happened was another Padawan, her friend in fact, Baris Ophi, is the one who actually did it, and Anakin Skywalker later uncovered this, and during this time as well, after she was blamed for this, she escaped into the Coruscant underworld and all that good stuff to kind of escape and clear her name. She actually temporarily formed an alliance with Asajj Ventress, but ended up being detained by Republic forces and ultimately banned from the Jedi Order, so she had to walk away from Anakin Skywalker, and of course that's about the time that Anakin started kind of... I don't know, losing it a little bit and kind of spiraled out of control and later would become Darth Vader, who later on in Star Wars Rebels, Ahsoka would finally figure out that this new Dark Lord was in fact her former master 
Anakin Skywalker, and she ended up having a battle against him as Darth Vader in the show Rebels as well. And the last we saw Ahsoka Tano before this episode, obviously, was with another Mandalorian named Sabine Wren in Star Wars Rebels, where she went out to look for another young Jedi Padawan named Ezra, who is kind of the main character in Star Wars Rebels. So Ahsoka Tano, awesome character. I hope we see her again a lot, actually. It'd be really cool if she joined the team full-time. And really quickly, I'll talk about Grand Admiral Thrawn. Just a, just a little bit of backstory on him. Big name drop here at the end of the episode. I was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be like, you know, Moff Gideon or maybe even Snoke or something. So they're bringing Grand Admiral Thrawn back from the original trilogy of books that came after... The Return of the Jedi, now it's called Legends, by Timothy Zane, called Heir to the Empire. Also, Grand Admiral Thrawn came back into canon in the Star Wars show Rebels that I just mentioned. He's the actual reason that Ezra had to be looked for in the first place. They went off into hyperspace somewhere with this creature that could live there. So it was assumed that he possibly died or never came back from that, but apparently we were wrong. So Grand Admiral Thrawn is basically the highest rank you can get in the Imperial Navy and was the closest advisor to the Emperor, Emperor Palpatine, or Darth Sidious. So essentially, he's a Chiss male. He kind of left the Blue Man group or whatever to work for Emperor Palpatine. And then after the Galactic Empire fell at the Return of the Jedi, in the old books, he took over the remnants of the Empire and led the remaining Imperial forces to a lot of victories against the New Republic. So basically, he was the highest rank you could achieve in the Imperial Navy, second only in command to the Emperor himself, and was known as a tactical genius. So anyway, guys, great episode. So much going on here. A lot of stuff, a lot of name drops, a lot of callbacks and references. I really love this episode. And we found out so much more about Baby Yogurt. I'm sorry, Grogu. Grogu. So anyway, we found out a lot of information this episode. I love the episode. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Did you love the episode? I'm seeing a lot of stuff on social media where people think this may be the best episode of all time, which is, again, only been two seasons, but the best episode so far. Anyway, guys, I'll leave those videos right over here, the Star Wars playlist for the history and lore. And you can also click right over here for new writing videos if you're interested in stuff like that as well. And do me a favor, if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.